shellers and welcome to another episode on the virtual shelling network i have another fun one for you guys today i mean all all virtual shelling is fun right but i got some extra funness going on if you can see we're here on sanibel on middle golf drive so middle golf um right where middle golf connects to east golf is coquina beach that's where we're at today it's a very popular beach for tourists and visitors as you can see I know it is really windy. If you can see the waves, um, they are just churning it up out there, which is good because we love wind and waves because why? That means we get a lot of beach trash and beach garbage. Again, not the type of garbage that people leave behind. Well, sometimes we get that too, but this is just junk and trash and garbage from the ocean. So this is discarded um, shells, discarded sea life, discarded um, egg casings, discarded parchment worm casings. So all of those things that wash up and this makes great opportunities for shelling and finding beach treasures. So we're gonna take a look at the beach today. I'm gonna kind of start down here and then work our way going to um, to the west so i want you guys to kind of see down here at the very end you're, you can't really see it. it's super foggy down there right now but if you can see that big tree at the end oh there's there's a crow trying to get into people's you have to watch the crows the seagulls aren't, aren't the problem the crows they are pickpockets and they will find your bag and they will go through your bag and they're like little thieves and they'll steal food and sunglasses they've had um we, when I was a kid, we were, um, I grew up in a condo on Marco and the crows would steal people's sunglasses and keys to their unit on the table. When they would go swimming, they would put their clothes um, and their keys to their unit and the, the crows would steal them. So make sure you zip up your bags. But anyway, down here around the point is where you're gonna have lighthouse. And if you can see the beach down here, to see how there's not a whole lot, like it kind of dwindles as far as the rack line goes like right here, I'm trying to point to it. Um, there's not a whole lot going on, right? But if we turn around, we've got a ton of stuff this way. So this is the way that we're going to be walking um, just because there's more activity this direction. So I do apologize for the wind. I did not come out here specifically to film today. I came out here um, actually to do a photo shoot with some of my shell bags. So I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek of one of the shell bags that I have. Look how cute this is for St. Patrick's Day and it's got some gold. I don't know if you guys will be able to see because the sun's not out, but it's got gold sparkly outline on the shamrocks. And so um, that's why I came out today is to, to take pictures of my shell bags for my website. However, since it is such a cool beach day and I have some time, um, I thought that I would go ahead and do a virtual shelling video here too. So are you guys ready? Let's get shelling. All right, hey everybody. I'm gonna try to stand this direction to kind of block some of the wind, but I want you guys to kind of see all of this stuff that is washed up and you see what catches your eye first. There's lots of duck clams, which I, I call elephant ears. I grew up calling these elephant ears, but they're duck clams. But to me, I mean, they look exactly like an elephant ear. So I call them elephant ears. Um, it is very, very stinky out here. And if you're not sure why, let me zoom in and show you. So here are sea urchins. There's so many sea urchins washed up today. If you've never found sea urchins, you would probably be in heaven. Um, I just wanna let you guys know, we call these stink bombs because they are so unbelievably stinky. Now, all of these are going to be dead, um, deceased. They're not alive. You can tell, oops, hold on a second. There you go. You can tell because their spines are no longer intact. Um, and that's the little teeth or the mouth of the animal inside right here. So this still has a creature in there and the creature is no longer alive, but it is very stinky because it is decaying tissue. Um, I don't like to collect sea urchins unless they are cleaned out just because they're, they're just so stinky and they're such a pain to clean. So I'm gonna give you guys a little tutorial briefly on how to clean these guys out. Um, 
So you'll have the spines. These will eventually fall off unless you were to take this home and dip it right into some glue. Um, these are gonna all come off. And I like to take them off because I just think the urchins are prettier when they don't have the spines. You'll be able to see kind of the pattern. And I'm sure we'll find some that are cleaned out today too. But what you wanna do is you gotta get the spines off. And I've torn up my hands doing this. So if you can wear some gloves, like some latex gloves, that is the best way to get all of the spines off. And then you've gotta get the little animal out. The best thing to do is let these dry out themselves, but I'm telling you, if you put these outside, especially in, a, in the warmer months, you will have critters come and take them. Okay, this is kind of like sushi to them. So you're gonna have um, rats or raccoons or uh, birds or other animals that are gonna come and steal your treasure shells off of your porch, because I've had that happen myself. So you wanna make sure when you dry these out, you're putting them somewhere that you know, no animal or creature is gonna get to them. And then once this is completely dried out, can you see how it's kind of detaching here? This will be kind of rattling around inside and then you'll be able to kind of just shake it out. Now, if you're really, if you know, if there's not a ton of urchins around and you're like, my gosh, I just found an urchin, it's the only one around, I really wanna take it home, it's no longer alive, but it's got this creature in here, try to find a shell, I'm gonna try to, and you wanna to try to find a shell that is a little bit pointy, okay, like a broken shell like this. And you're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna to try to make sure you guys can see, and you're gonna kind of just poke the animal inside to try to, oops, broke my shell, detach it from the sides of the sea urchin shell. And you probably don't wanna use one of these duck clams because they're kind of fragile. But there you go. Can you guys see how I'm just kind of poking the sides to get that detached? Okay, so let me see. Oh, we're almost there, almost done. So poke a little bit more. And once it's completely detached, and it's a lot easier to do with two hands, by the way. Okay, so now you guys can see the little teeth of the animal is rolling around in there. Can you guys see it? Sometimes you have to break that up to get it out. Other times, if you're lucky, you'll be able to shake it out. It's a lot easier to do when they are completely dry um, because this one's still kind of like sticking to the inside. But once that comes out, you're good. Once it comes out, you're like golden. Oh, did it come out? Oh no, it didn't. I thought it did. Let me see if I can get it out for you guys. I don't think this one's gonna come out, but can you hear it shaking? I don't know if you can hear it shaking in there, but that's the idea. You would want that to be completely out of the shell, and then you'll be able to take that home and let it dry out all the way. If you bleach these, you guys, they will bleach, and they're gonna be really pretty purple, but they're just not gonna be natural. So just keep that in mind. Here's like a little baby one right here. So you can see the little mouth, the little teeth, a little bit better on this one. Again, the spines are coming off. And they look like they come off really easily. And if you clean a couple of these, it's not a big deal. But if you're sitting here scraping these little spines off for hours, like if you if you get a big haul of these, if you take like 25 home, your, your hands are gonna be torn up, trust me. So that's how you get the little spines off like that. And you have to be careful because these are really fragile shells. But if you can see, this one's like a purple. When you bleach this, it will bleach to a light purple. It'll be really pretty, but again, they bleach very, very quickly. So if you wanna keep them natural, I don't recommend bleaching them. Okay, something else I wanna show you guys. We have a lot of deceased shells. So here is a scallop that is in the process of drying out. It is no longer alive, but I'm telling you, if you take this home, it's gonna be a nightmare. It's gonna smell so bad and be so stinky. So the best thing to do is just leave those at the beach. Here's a little cockle shell that's got some remnants of a little creature in there that the birds probably are gonna to start to be eating. Um, the other thing is to look around for other treasures. So right here, we've got a little operculum right here hiding. So that's always really fun. So we'll stick that in our shell bag. And then I also um, see something up here too. And I'm gonna let you guys see if you see what I see. And I'll zoom in to give you guys a closer look. Do you guys see the little starfish right there? Okay, so right here, we have a little starfish that got caught up in all of this. 
sadly sometimes they're gonna be kind of mangled like this one is if they're still soft you can usually kind of lay them out flat um, but if they're all mangled like this and dry they're just gonna kind of not be very like pretty of a beach treasure so I usually just leave them be um, unfortunately most of this sea life is going to be deceased so anything you find you can take but just understand that all of this stuff was once alive and, and alive not too long ago and it's going to be extremely smelly all right so we're just going to kind of walk down a little ways and see what else catches our eye I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see a little bit closer as I'm walking all of this stuff. Lots of sea urchins. And it's so tempting to want to pick them all up. I just know how it is to clean them. Let's see what else we got here. And sometimes you got to get down to look. Here's a like little piece of driftwood right here. So we find little pieces of driftwood and all of this stuff. Sometimes we'll find mermaid purses, which is one of like my favorite things to find. We don't find mermaid purses often, but they're so, so fun. And we're getting into the season where we usually find them too, kind of late winter, early spring. So here you go. Here's like a whole bunch of sea urchins. And they're all deceased. And what is this? Is this a piece of a some type of a sponge. Okay, so this looks like kind of a cool sponge, right? Stinky, stink bomb. Like you're not even gonna make it home in your car. You're gonna pull over to the side of the road and ditch that thing, I'm telling you. It's stinky, stinky, stinky. Here's a cool piece of driftwood here. Oh, it's a big piece too, with all the holes bored into it. So that's kind of a cool piece. And then you've got like little smaller pieces too. So. If you're like a mini tiny collector and you want a little little one to put in your bowl. Oh, look here. You guys see the egg casing? Can you spot it? Here. Looks like a little tulip egg casing. There we go. So it's just on the bottom of like, it looks like maybe a broken pen shell, but that's really cool to see a little egg casing. Unfortunately, these didn't hatch. And they don't like like they were really even developed yet too. But these are the kind of things that you might find washed up here, um, which is fun. If you're if you if you love beach treasures like this, like sea life, um, hopefully we'll find some cool maybe crab shells. This is definitely like the the place and the time that you're gonna find all this cool stuff. All right, cool find alert. This starfish kind of laid out rather perfectly to dry. So it's completely dried out, no longer alive. But what is interesting about this sea star? This sea star at some point damaged this leg right here. Okay, maybe it maybe it, it got, you know, bitten off or torn off, but it tore off in, in a way that part of the leg was still there. So instead of growing one leg, it grew two. So you have a five-arm starfish normally that has a sixth leg. And that is super, super cool. So sometimes if you see the little anoles, the little lizards um, that are down here, sometimes you'll see them, they have a split tail and that's because they got injured, but there was a little bit of the tail still left. So when it regrew, it actually grew two. So this is very, very cool. What a cool little beach find that is. Well, this is kind of cool. What is this, like a, there's like a big, big sea sponge. Oh, I bet that's gonna be stinky, but I wonder if I can use my little preservation method that I've been working on and see. This will be a good test, test unit. All right, let me clean this up. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got them all cleaned up. And I wanted to show you, and the sun just went in. Let me show you guys too, if you guys can see the sky. I don't know, hold on, let me see if you guys will be able to see. The clouds are so strange. They're like fluffy and like there's not a lot of clouds. They're just really kind of thin, but they're there blocking the sun. Anyway, so I hope you guys can see right around here, it's kind of orange. 
So this is the part that hasn't fully dried out yet. This sponge used to be bright, bright orange, right? It used to be so pretty, but what happened? It died and then it started to dry out and now it's gonna be kind of an ugly brown, right? Not that, not that it's, I'm sorry, not that it's ugly, but it's just not as pretty and cool looking as, um, you know, a bright orange one, right? So that's what I try to explain to you guys is not only do these, that might be a better angle for you to see, not only do these dry out, but they also are super stinky. And once they do dry out, they remain stinky. It's not like the stink like goes away. So I'm working on a preservation method. If I can perfect it, I'll let you guys know. So far I have not been able to, but I'm still working on it. So we'll see if I can try it on this one and see what happens. So I will keep you guys posted on that, but look how big and pretty that this one is. Cool, right? All right, let's check out this little section. Something over here caught my eye. Actually, a couple couple little things caught my eye over here. I'm gonna just stand here for a second so you guys can see what you find and see if you see anything very cool here. So the first thing that probably actually caught your eye is this piece of cow hoof here. Um, if you have dogs and you buy them cow hooves, you are familiar with these. Um, these, you're probably thinking like, where are their cows on Sanibel, right? Well, that's what they use for crab bait in the crab traps. Okay, so when you guys see these laying around or you see bones washing up, um, it's when the crabs eat all the meat off of the appendage, the bones or the hoofs fall out of the trap and then get washed to shore. So just so you know where those come from, we don't like have cow pastures around here or something. Okay, do you guys see the mermaid purse? I'm so excited as I was just telling you guys about mermaid purses and how a lot of the time they wash up um, during big windstorms like this. So here is, uh oh, we're stuck, a little mermaid purse. And I wanna be careful because the little ends right here, if you can see, they kinda curl when they dry and I don't really wanna rip them off. So I wanna be really careful as it's hooked to something here. Let's see if I can get this off of it. There we go. So here is your little bit slimy, <laughs> little bit of a slimy mermaid purse right here. Get the seaweed off of it. So this is what your mermaid purse looks like. And they'll be nice and puffy. Like you see like right here, it's still a little bit squishy because it's not totally dried out on this side yet because it was sitting face down. But this side here is completely hard. So once they dry, they kind of shrivel up just a little bit, but they are so fun. This is a egg casing to a shark or a skate. And I am not well versed enough in the species um, to tell you which one or what species it is, but just know that either sharks or skates create these egg casings and then the little babies hatch out or one little baby, it's usually just one per egg casing, um, will hatch out of here. And then once it dries, you have a really cool little beach treasure to put in your bowl or whatever. But that is super, super cool. I'm so excited. All right, something else that's kind of cool up here that we're gonna take a look at is another sea whip. Do you guys see it? This is one of those purple ones kind of grab it and it's got all of this stuff stuck all over it, all of this seaweed. So sometimes you gotta just try to tear some of the little seaweed things off. There we go. Get this one off too. And then one more and we'll get it all cleaned up. There we go. Look how pretty. Hopefully you guys are able to see purple. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it or not, but it's a really pretty shade of purple. And I love sea whips. And we do not find these very often. These are not just a regular beach treasure that you're going to find all the time. You have to have big winds and storms that bring these in. Um, but look how pretty. Look how fun. All right, guys. So sometimes you're going to come across a little bit of a uh, little bit of actual beach trash. So this is, who knows what this is from. It could be like a fishing pole holder off of a boat or whatever. Um, if you don't have an extra bag, I just throw this in my shell bag and just discard it when I get home. So 
please always do your part and if you see beach trash that you can pick up obviously some of them like you know obviously like a big crab trap or a big piece of wood or something um, you can't bring with you but if you're able to um, to pick that up please definitely do and I almost stepped on another little tulip egg casing right here look how cute this one is on a little piece of a pen shell so we'll get that rinsed off and that'll be super cute in a little shell bowl so a lot of these guys um, simply don't make it because whatever they're attached to breaks off and then it ends up washing ashore so um, sometimes it's just a matter of you know nature and it kind of stinks but again you know all of the stuff that we collect on the beach with the exception of like driftwood um, is usually at one point alive and we're basically collecting the remains but I always tell people you know at least it's being appreciated at least it's being treasured by us and we love sea life and we love the beach um, so always kind of do your best to not only keep the beach clean but just appreciate the things that you find um, and just know that a lot of the time, like this is just nature, you know, like like we have sea urchin wash-ups like this every so often. It's unfortunate, um, but it's just part of it. Look at this big piece of sponge. Oh, oh, this is gonna be a stinky one. But look how big, look how big that sponge is. That would be like such a stinky sponge though. Ugh, I can already smell it. Very cool though. There must have been some pretty high winds and rough waves um, to be, is it a piece of sea glass or no, it's a leaf, okay. My husband's the one that finds all the good sea glass. So I try to like channel his sea glass eyes. But yeah, these sea urchins, um, they populate so well, so it's not like there's gonna be a shortage of them. Oh, here, this is kind of cool too, so. On this pen shell, you're gonna see there are some slipper shells or Indian boats. And this is what they look like when they're alive as they attach um, to the slipper shell. Now, you know this one's not alive because I can move it around. And if I pushed really hard, it would, it would pop right off. Um, but these are gonna be really stinky too. So this one actually has two of them together. So this one is hitchhiking on top of this one. And then there's a barnacle that was hitchhiking on top of that. So it's kind of interesting how different shells use another shell as a host to live on, which is pretty cool too. So what do you guys think of all this stuff? Isn't this so cool? I don't know, I think it's cool. I get so excited when the beach is like this because I just love like going through and looking for all of the treasures. Here's a little pen shell in the shape of a heart. How cute is that? You guys see this? Here, let me move this. You guys can see how cute is the little heart. I love pen shells. Move it over here so you guys can see it a little bit better. Oh, it's got some barnacles on the top too. Um, and I'll show you guys too. Let me, let me get down. So barnacles are also a type of sea creature that's alive. And oops, when we when we find them, usually they're empty. But you can see here and over here, these still have a creature in them. They're no longer alive because they've been out here too long and they're starting to, to dry out. But when you have barnacles that are alive, you'll actually see the creature in there. These are all empty here. So some people don't realize um, that barnacles are actually usually alive, sometimes too. All right guys, as I'm kind of looking, around here to see if I can find anything up here. This is another example of just like a collection of bones from one of those crab traps. And I, I couldn't tell you, and I really don't want to go through them, but there's some type of like probably carpal metacarpal foot, foot bone, like your ankle or your wrist of those little bones that are all put together like that. Um, so that just gives you just another example of like so, like when you find bones they're not like dinosaur bones they're from like a crab trap and right here I see some purple so here's another little sea whip all tangled up in here Let's see if we can shake it all out get them so here's another little sea whip and he's missing his little base but he's still really really purple and really pretty let me get this little seaweed off right here so you guys can see a little bit better 
Come on, there we go. Look how pretty. So here's another little piece of a sea whip. And again, they just look really pretty in bowls. Or some people that, you know, glue shells on canvas or paint canvas will put one of these little sea whips to make like a mixed media, like 3D. So that's really kind of fun too. All right, guys, so I don't take crab shells unless they're cleaned out. So this one right here is completely empty. Um, sometimes you'll find crab shells and they'll be the actual shell from the crab that, that died, but sometimes they'll just be the shed. So just because you find a crab shell doesn't mean that the crab isn't still alive, which is kind of cool because they do shed. Um, and sometimes that is what the shell will be. So this is the fun little beach treasure. So we'll go ahead and stick that in our shell bag. And we're gonna kind of look through here and see if we find anything else. Um, here it looks like, get down here, a little paper fig. Let's see if it's broken or not. Oh, it is, darn it. Yeah, those paper figs, I love them. Um, oh, here's another really cool starfish. I mean, it's not cool because he's dead because that's really sad, but look at this. Now, unlike the last one we found, you guys can tell me what's interesting about this one. All right, let me get him cleaned up. All right, so unfortunately this little guy is kind of squished. I don't know if he got ran over, or stepped on, or something happened to squish him. Um, he's pr pretty flat. Um, but the unique thing about this one is he only has four legs. Do you guys see that? So this one dried a little bit, um, curled, but this starfish they usually have five, and unlike the last one we found that had an extra leg, this one is actually missing a leg. So that's actually kind of kind of cool. Uh, it's sad that he's no longer alive, but um, you know, for educational purposes, that is pretty neat. Okay guys, um, I just found the tiniest little, you guys know me, I love teeny tiny shells, right? And I love teeny tiny sea life too. So this little tiny sea urchin, is no longer alive, but what I wanted to show you, and I know, is like so super small. Okay, that's how big the little guy is. But here is the little mouth that was inside that I took out. So you can see this was the inside of the shell, and then what you see on the outside is right here. There's it's like kind of got some seaweed stuck to it. Let me see if I can get that off without breaking it. There we go. So that's what you guys see there looking at the sea urchin and so I just took that out so this little guy is all cleaned out he just has a couple more spines to come off and then um, he'll be a cute little beach treasure look how adorable all right so this big pile lots of piles um, but if you guys can see this big pile this is where you're gonna find stuff hiding um, and I don't know if you guys can see all the flies too, so the flies will get really bad as everything is kind of decaying and becoming more stinky. So this is probably going to be pretty nasty um, at some point over the next week. Um, so it's good and bad, right? Like, you know, stuff will be more cleaned out from the bugs, but it'll be like really stinky. So. There's, that's why I always say there's like pros and cons of shelling all the time. You know, like if you, if you were down here right now, oh, here's a really pretty little crab claw. Let me see, is he attached though? No, he's not attached. Look how pretty this one is. Oh my gosh. Look at that blue crab claw. So vibrant and pretty. And that one's pretty well cleaned out already. You can see there's nothing in there. So we'll throw that in the bag. Um, but you know, let's just say that you're down here right now shelling. And unfortunately, a lot of this stuff is really stinky. It's not cleaned out, but you're still able to get here before it's really stinky and find some really cool stuff, right? And if you come down in a week or two weeks, you know, the bad news is some of this stuff is gonna be like really stinky and gross. Um, however, you're gonna have a lot of stuff already cleaned out for you. So that's kind of cool too. the little babies oh it's not cleaned out though you guys see that it's not cleaned out but he is really cute 
give you guys a quick little view of the birds. It's a good day to be a bird today. Super humid. Lots of waves. A little chilly, but they think it's great. You guys can see all the birds. They're going crazy with all of this seafood out here that they can eat. They think it is delicious. You guys can see the tide coming in or going out, I'm not really sure. I honestly, guys, most of the time, I don't ever look at the tides when I come to the beach. I come to the beach when I can come to the beach and if it's low tide, it's low tide and if it's high tide, it's high tide. So that's when I come to the beach. Look at all of this stuff, oh my gosh. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Super fun. Um, I love it when we have wash ups like this. There's just so much to go through and see. And I mean, some people think it's like, ooh, it's stinky, it's gross. There's like dead stuff everywhere. But you know, I think it's kind of fun. You find really cool things. And like I said, everything that we pick up pretty much except driftwood um, is deceased. So, you know, whether it's a seashell that's no longer alive, or a crab shell um, that's no longer alive, or it could be a shed from a shell, um, or a starfish, or a sand dollar, or what what have you. It's it's all just stuff that is no longer alive. So, um, but we do appreciate and love our beach treasures. So, this has definitely been super fun. I appreciate you all watching, and thank you so much for your support. I always love hearing feedback about episodes. Um, some of you message me when you love an episode. I love hearing that. I love to hear what you think. I love to hear what your favorite treasures are. So definitely keep me posted um, on your feedback. If you have any questions, as always, you can message me directly at virtualshelling at gmail.com. And until next time, I hope you guys have a shell-tastic week. And I will see you again soon. Bye.